Hey, what's going on, Dean? Thanks for calling in the show, man. We appreciate it. What's up, y'all? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can, man. Loud and clear. Thanks for calling in. Like I said, we are live currently at blogtalkradio.com. Thanks for calling in. Sorry I was late, man. I was having girl trouble. <laughs> it's all yeah, good, man. Yeah. I can you know it. <laughs> I certainly do. But uh, for my first question here is, uh, you know, what, what have you been up to lately? I mean, pretty simple as that. I mean, your last fight fell through in June on the Ultimate Chaos card um, against Javier Vasquez. But what have you been doing uh, since that whole debacle? Uh, well, you know, I've been I've been just trying to stay busy, you know, practicing and learning and getting better. Um, I moved my, my school. I'm in the process of opening another one up. I'm also um, the head instructor of another American top team. So, you know, I'm, I got my hands that I – that I'm, uh, you know, my hands in three American top team locations that I'm working on. So, you know, I've just been busy doing that and then trying to train and get better, you know, so that I can fight competitively. Man, these guys out there are tough, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, are you going to continue to uh, to stay at featherweight, or are you going to maybe, you know, move around from that and lightweight? You know, what are you, what are you looking to do in your MMA career going forward? Well, like – you know, I fought, you know, at all kinds of different weights throughout my career. I mean, all relatively uh, based around the lightweight division. But, mm-hmm. see, right now I'm so, you know, so late in the game that, you know, I just want to take good fights. You know, a matter of fact, you know, I'm fighting uh, January 8th at 150. Um, you know, I'm waiting for Ricardo Mayor to sign the dotted line. That's going to be a 160. So, you know, any I just want to take good fights. And whatever weight they want to put on it, I'll do it from – 145 to, you know, 170 is a good enough fight for me. Uh, you know, got to get that paper. We understand that. You know what I'm saying? I'm all about getting that paper, man. I'll fight anybody. You know what I'm saying? I'll fight your mama if she called me a name, you know. Put some money <laughs> Understand. Yeah. Understandable. So, uh, AJ, go ahead. Uh, hey, what's going on, Dean? What's up, man? Yeah, uh, question. Did you uh, get a chance to watch uh, the BJ Penn fight uh, over the weekend? Yeah, I did. I did see that. I didn't really get a chance to watch all of it or the whole show because um, I was at the the World Grappling Championships. But um, by the time we got out, we got to watch the UFC, man. You know, BJ looked phenomenal. It was probably one of the, probably the best he's ever looked physically, uh, mentally, everything. I mean, he just looked unstoppable. You know, I was, I was uh, talking to um, – a couple of my buddies, and Ben Askren actually, I think I was talking to him about it, and just saying that, like, he might be the most dominant champion in his respective division. You know, I don't really see anybody touching him at 155 right now. You know, it's like, you know, he's just on that type of tear right now. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I definitely agree with you, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even, I mean, like, even more so, like, you know, Anderson Silva is probably my favorite guy to watch. But, like, if you, you look at the division, like, you know, Henderson may give him a run if they fought again. Um, you know, some some guys have – I mean, you know, even Nate Marquardt, if they fought again, Nate Marquardt might even give him a run. But, like, you know, when you look at what BJ's done at 155, man, it's just like, man, can anybody really touch him, man? Like, it's almost like the guys who lasted the longest have taken the worst beatings, you know, it's, it's not like they lasted a long time and were competitive. It's been, like, beatings, and the longer they lasted – the worst of beating was. So I think, you know, right now, BJ really might be the most dominant champion in, his, in the division. Yeah, you can certainly make a strong argument for that. And, uh, you know, I was going to, I was going to say at the top of, you know, top of the show when I was introducing you that we, we've seen a lot of your face on USC, you know, programming recently with, uh, you know, BJ Penn hyping up, but I didn't want to come at you like that, you know, talking about that. Uh, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? They always, you know, and I ain't going to lie, you know what I'm saying? If I beat me, I would be bragging about that too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, like, yeah, they always be bringing that up. I, be, why, why, why I keep bringing that up, man. That happened 10 years ago almost. You know what I'm saying? That was almost 10 years ago that happened. They keep bringing up old stuff, man. You yeah, know? And it, like, like he doesn't have enough highlight reels uh, already. I know. Pull you know what's funny, man? Like, even even though he knocked me out, I give him his props, he knocked me out. But right after that, he knocked out Uno, man. That was way worse. Uno's eyes, he was looking cross-eyed. You know what I'm saying? They should be showing that one, not mine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's gotta be, it's got to be rough. But, uh, 
You know, I mentioned the drop to the featherweight division earlier after you were uh, released by the UFC. You know, were, were there any talks of you going straight down to uh, the UFC's kind of sister promotion, the WEC, after your loss to Josh Neard? You know, did you have a bad falling out? What you know, what's your relationship? No, no. With? Actually, honestly, like at that fight, man, like you know, I've been in this game a long time, so it's always kind of like you know, if you've been in this game a long time, you're always like on that fence of, man, should I continue to do this? Should I not? So like. When when they decided to release me, I was even though I was I had told my management I was like even before they I got the papers I was like man I either need to drop weight or just you know hang it up. So you know I told him I was like yo I think I'm just going to drop weight and then he was like well that's all right because UFC wants to release you anyway so I was like man that's fine and he said and he told me that you know um, you know if I wanted to go to WEC you know just you know, let them know when I get, you know, when I get that drive back and I want to, if I want to fight in the WEC, just let them know. But I never really pursued it and talked to them about it. So that's really why it ain't really happened. Because, I mean, I think that, you know, I'm not saying that they want me, but I think that if I really wanted to try to push for it, I think they would give me a shot at 145. Because I think I would be a good addition, you know, to that, to that cast down there. But I never really pushed for it because I was just kind of on the lines of, you know, there's a lot of other opportunities out there and, you know, sometimes when you're with such a, a dominant company, you almost feel like, you know, just an employee of that company. And right now, I'm a freelance fighting, and I've had, I've gotten some pretty good opportunities, you know, doing my freelance stuff and, and just having a lot of fun doing it, you know. And I don't feel like I have that stronghold and I can't do things that I want to do. So, I mean, nothing against WEC. I mean, you know, they're a great company. But, you know, at this point right now, I'm just kind of happy freelancing and, you know, bouncing around and, you know, having fun doing different things. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that uh, that a bit. You know, WEC's kind of get you're locked in there. If you know, if you're signed with them, you can't do much uh, bouncing around. So, you know, but uh, you mentioned Ricardo Mayorga the um, you know a couple of minutes ago, and he signed with Shine Fights, I believe. You know, are you uh, you know are you going to be a part of that promotion come 2010? Are you looking just to like you said, just kind of go from promotion to mo- promotion and, and do what you do? Well, you know, ultimately it's all going to come down to paper. If a, if a promotion wants to hold me down, they're really going to have to put a lot of carrots in front of my face. Other than that, you know, I'm looking to just go from, you know, fight to fight. You know, that's the way I see it, fight to fight, and just and just keep having fun with what I'm doing. I mean, you know, I, I just got done doing the World Championships this week, and I had a blast doing that. You know, I just want to compete and have fun doing whatever it is that I want to do, and I'm not really looking for – you know, I'm not up and coming. I don't really need a, a home. You know, I, I've done – Everything I've wanted to do in this uh, in this fight game right now is just man, just go out and have fun fighting, just punch cats in the face. That's all I want to do. <laughs> yeah, we and we enjoy watching it. So uh, I'll kick it over to AJ one more time. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, you know, I, I was listening to you talk, Dean, and I can't help but think like, if if the UFC were able to call you, like let's say tomorrow. And if you a fight with, I don't know, Kyle Uno or any one of the veterans or a fight, would you be interested? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> like, the only person I probably wouldn't be interested in is Kyle Uno because somehow that guy's got my number, it seems, you know? Like, <laughs> like I don't know what it is, man. Like, he can't, I don't know how he beat me twice, you know? Because every time I fall him, I feel like I should be just tearing him up. But he always kind of beats me. But anybody else, you know what I'm saying? Realistically speaking, I wouldn't care who it was. You know, I would fight any any one of them guys, really, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have no, I would have no problem fighting for them. But again, like I said, I just don't want to really, I wouldn't be interested in being tied down to the organization like that and, you know, have them kind of, have them handcuffs around my neck, so to say, that I couldn't do anything else because sometimes you feel like that. And there's a lot of pressure, too, with being involved with that because, like, you're always kind of like, Gonna drop me, or they're gonna keep me, da da da. So now, knowing that I'm, I don't really got no home like that, I don't never really feel that pressure of going, oh man, they're gonna drop me if I don't put on a good enough fight or if I don't win, you know, because I already know I ain't got no, <laughs> I ain't got nothing to lose right now, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'd go out and bang it out. 